Hey guys, Saleh. Today I'm going to write the day trading version of the alligator strategy using the ChatGPT01 model. While I was writing this strategy, I happened to learn about two new indicators that I didn't know about that improved the results of this strategy. But not only that, the result of this strategy happened to beat even my best private strategy yet, which is why I was a bit hesitant to even release this video. But I did it anyways. So it's gonna be awesome. Let's get right into it. This is the prompt that I used. Please explain how the alligator strategy works. Assume I want to write it with code, so explain to me entry and exit rules for it. Also, tell me which indicators would be nice to use alongside with it, especially for avoiding ranging markets. Now first, let me show you the alligator strategy in action. It consists of three moving average lines. The blue line, as explained by ChatGPT, is a smoothed average with a period of 13. The red line is called the teeth of the alligator, and it has a period of 8 which is our fastest moving average, is called the lips of the alligator, and it has a period of 5. And the basic idea is that when the alligator is waking up, for example in here, it will start to open its mouth, and when it is doing that, first we're going to see the lips of the alligator, and then its teeth, and then its jaw. And when these lines are crossing each other, it means that the alligator is closing its mouth, and the trend is over. Alright, so what are the entry rules? We want the value for the lips to be bigger than teeth, and both of them to be more than the jaw. The other thing is that we want the current price to be above all the three lines, and the opposite is true for a short position. All right, so let's go to Jesse and start by creating a new strategy. I'm gonna call it Alligator AI. Then I will open my PyCharm editor and open the code here. First, let's define a new property and name it Alligator. And in it, I'm simply going to return TA Alligator and then pass in the current candles. And I'm not even going to change the parameters. Next, I'm going to define another property and I'm going to call it trend. And in it, I'm going to say if the current alligator's lips are bigger than the alligator's teeth, and if this one is bigger than the alligator's jaw, I'm going to return one. Actually, you're also supposed to check for the price. So we wanna also make sure that the current price is above the lips of the alligator. If the opposite of this is true, I'm going to return minus one. And if none of these are true, I'm going to simply return zero. All right, so my entry rule is going to be whether or not the current trend equals one. For a short position, I will do the opposite. All right, now that we have our entry rules, it's time to set the position sizing. All right, so my entry price is going to be the current price because I want to open the position using a market order. My stop is going to be the current entry minus the ATR with default values multiplied by 2. Now using these two, I want to risk only 3% of my capital in each trade. So I'm going to say quantity equals utils risk to quantity. For the first one, I'm going to pass my available margin. Next we have the risk, which I want it to be 3. Next I will pass my entry and then the stop and lastly I will say the fee rate is the current fee of the exchange that I'm trading this. Alright now we're ready to submit the order and I'm gonna simply say self buy equals quantity and then pass the price which is entry. Now for my short condition I will simply do the opposite of this so instead of subtracting the ATR by 2, I'm adding it. All right, now the value for shoot cancel entry, it needs to be here, but it doesn't matter what I set here because I'm using a market order to open my position. So we're not going to have any cancellations whatsoever. For my exit rule, at first I tried what ChatGPT suggested, which is to close the position when the lips, in other words, the green line, crosses back over the teeth in the opposite direction. Now, let me show you how to write that first. We can simply define the update position method and in it, I'm going to say if we are in a long position and the current trend is no longer 1, that means we have a trend reversal, so simply liquidate my position. And of course, we would do the opposite for short positions. All right, so let's go and execute a backtest for this. First, I will start with the 15 minutes time frame. And as for the duration of the backtest, I will start since the beginning of 2022. And I will backtest it up until just a few days ago. And the fast mode is on, so it's the benchmark. So let's run it. While this is going, I'm going to also backtest it on a bigger time frame, such as 30 minutes. And another one with the hourly. 
and then another one with the 4 hours. Alright, so this is the result for the 4 hours. This is for 1 hour, this is for 30 minutes, and this is for 15 minutes. Alright, so the lower the time frame, the more it actually loses. So this means we need some filters. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to use what ChatGPT suggested for avoiding the ranging market. The first is to use the ADX indicator. So let's go back and define a new property. I'm going to call it ADX and simply return whether or not the current ADX for the current candles is more than 30. And in my intro rule, I will say and self.ADX. I'll do the same for short positions. So let's go back and execute everything one more time. Because I want to be able to compare the results very easily on the benchmark page, I'm going to remove some of these items, such as the start date and the finish date and the name of the strategy, the exchange symbol and the net profit and Sortino and Omega ratios. All right, so we can see that all the results improved. Not only that, the one with the four hours time frame is actually looking really good. And these are the other ones. By the way, I tried almost everything that ChatGPT suggested, but in this video, I'm only showing you the ones that actually worked for me. So the next thing that I tried and it helped a lot was using a higher time frame. So let's go back and define a new property. And I'm going to call this the long term candles. And in it, I will return the get handles. First, I will pass the current exchange, then the current symbol. And as the time frame, I will pass four hours. But since we are also trading the 4 hours time frame, I need to write this in a dynamic way so that if we are trading it, we should use a bigger time frame. So I'm going to change this code to say big TF equals 4 hours. But if the current time frame equals 4 hours, then use the 6 hours. And I will replace this with big TF. All right, next, I'm going to copy what I wrote for the trend, paste it here, and I'm going to call this one big trend. Now, I'm not going to use this value of the alligator because it is using the current candles. So I will also duplicate this one and call it big. And instead of using the current candles, I will use the long term candles. Now in here, instead of this one, I will replace it by big alligator. And in my entry rules, I will add another condition saying if the current big trend equals one, and I'll do the opposite for my short positions. So now let's go back to Jesse and rerun everything one more time. So nearly all the results are improved except the one for the four hours. But it's not looking bad, it's just that the one hour and 30 minutes look much better now. The 15 minutes is still very bad. Now, because the one hour is looking good here, I did what I usually do with lower time frames, which is instead of taking the profit dynamically like we did in here, I'm going to take profit at a specific target. So I'm going to remove this and instead I'm going to add a new function called on open position. And in it, I'm going to say if the current position is a long position, I want you to submit the surplus. The quantity of it is going to be the quantity of current position. And the price of it, as we described here, is going to be the current price minus two times of the current ATR. And if it is short position, we will do the opposite. But I wanted to take profit at a specific point. So I will say take profit equals the same, but I want my risk reward ratio to be one. So I will multiply it by two and I will do the opposite for my short positions. All right, so let's go back to Jesse. Actually, I'm going to remove the 15 minutes because it's not performing well and it actually takes a lot to execute. All right, so let's rerun all the other three. So while this is going, I wanted to quickly remind you guys that we have a Discord community with more than 3000 quants such as you and I. We hang out there, share ideas and help each other out. And I would love to see you guys there. So check this out. All the results are improved. And in fact, the hourly looks really well. The sharp ratio is 1.1. The max drawdown is minus 20 and the net profit is 106%. So let's take a look at the equity curve, which looks really well. And this is for 30 minutes. And this one's for four hours. All right, so while we are using the bigger time frame, there's also one more trick that I usually use that works really well, and that's using the 100 moving average, but with the bigger time frame. So I'm going to define another property and call it the long term MA. And in it, I will say E equals TA 
EMA. I will pass the long term candles. And for the period, I will use uh, 100. And I will say if the current price is bigger than E, return 1. Otherwise, return minus 1. And in my entry conditions, I will also add this one. Let's go back and rerun all of them here. If you notice a sharp ratio number here, you'll notice that all of them are slightly improved comparing to what we had before. So let's take a look at the equity curve. And this is how it looks. Now I like this one specifically because it seems that it's been going up and up and up. And during this ranging market, it didn't do well. But the truth is that almost every other trend following strategy was getting slaughtered during this time. All right, so at this point, I wanted to improve the results even further and I needed more indicators. So I went back to ChatGPT and I simply said, I tried the strategy and indicators that you mentioned, but I'm not getting the best results. The ADX is really helpful, but I need more like it to avoid ranging conditions. And it gave me a bunch of other ideas and indicators and I tried nearly all of them, but none of them was really helpful. Now, I don't know if you guys know about this one, but in the past few weeks, I've been working on a custom version of GPT for Jesse which has access to the documentation and the strategy examples that I've wrote myself. It's using the OpenAI API, so it's pretty much the same thing as ChatGPT, except it has a better knowledge about algo trading. Now, I simply pasted my strategy so far, and I just said that, you know what, the ADX was really good, but I tried a bunch of others and give me some new ones. And it started giving me ideas, such as the OBV and other volume indicators, which almost never work out for me. It also suggested the RSI, which wasn't helpful. MACD, again, not helpful, until I came across this one, the CMO, which is a momentum indicator that oscillates between minus 100 and plus 100. It also gave me the code, so this is how to define it inside Jesse, and this is how to use it. So we can say, if the value of CMO is bigger than 50, I want to take long trades, and the opposite for short trades. So first, let me show you how it looks like. We have this threshold, which is set to zero. If the price of the CMO is bigger than that, it means we have an uptrend. If it's below that, it means we have a downtrend. But what we really need is for the value of it to be above a certain threshold. Now, the one that really worked well for me was 30 and minus 30 for short trades. So if this value is above 30, we want to look for long trades. If it's below this, like in here, or here we want to look for short trades. So let's go back and define a new property and I'm going to call it CMO and I'm going to return TA CMO and that's it. Now in my entry condition, I will say and the CMO value is bigger than 30 and I will do the opposite for my short positions. So let's go back to Jesse. Now remember these numbers. Now let's re-execute them. All right, so it improved the results for the four hours, but in hourly, it actually didn't help. I think it made it slightly worse. And this is for 30 minutes. So let's go back and try the same thing, except with the number 20 and re-execute everything. All right, check this out. The sharp is now at 1.4 for the hourly and the PNL is at 147%. This looks fantastic. And this is for 30 minutes and this is for four hours. The four hours actually didn't get better, but the hourly looks really good, especially before 2024. All right, next I came back to the GPT and I kept asking for other suggestions and I tried nearly all of them until I came across this one, the stochastic oscillator. Now this is how we can define it in Jesse and this is obviously how we can use it. All right, so let me show you how it looks like. But in my experience, the stochastic RSI works much better than the stochastic. So I will also add this one. Now, I don't know why that is, but again, this one usually works better in my strategies, which is why I actually went with this one in my strategy. All right, so we have two thresholds at 80 and 20. So basically, it's very similar to how the RSI works. When the value of it is below 20, it means that the market is oversold. And when it is above 80, it means that it is overbought, which is good for shorting. So let's go back and define a new property and I'm going to call it the SRSI and in it I will return SRSI, I will pass the current candles and I will leave the default values. Next in my entry conditions I will say if the RSI is below 20 I will take long positions and if it's above 80 I will take short positions. So let's go back again take a look at this. Now let's re-execute all of them. Seems like we're getting an error. 
Oh, so basically the stochastic RSI, it doesn't return one scalar value. It returns a named tuple, as you can see here. So what I wanted to return is the value K. Now, by the way, K is this blue line and D is this orange line, which is a moving average of that. But we don't really care about that. We just want the blue line itself. All right, so let's go back and rerun them one more time. Wow, it is much better. Look at this sharp. On the 30 minutes, it's 1.9. For hourly, it's 1.5. On the 4 hours, it, it came down. But at this point, I don't think I'm going to trade this one at all. So let's just close it. This is on the 30 minutes. And this is on the hourly. Now, both of these look good. But this one looks much better. Now, here's the thing, though. The max return is only minus 6 which is basically nothing because I'm comfortable to take as much as minus 30% max drawdown. And for the hourly, it is minus 7%. So that means I can simply go back and multiply the size of my positions by, let's say, 5. So let's rerun this one more time. All right, so now when the max drawdown is minus 29%, the net profit is at 1,721%. So let's take a look. This is how it looks like. Now you cannot even see the equity curve of Bitcoin anymore. Let's take a look at the hourly. Now both of them look fantastic, even during this nasty market range that we had. Again, this is how the BTC was, and this is how our equity curve looks like. By the way, I also extended the duration of the backtest starting from 2022 for this strategy, and here's the result. And I also made a premium version of the same strategy, and this is the result for that. So let's compare the two. So instead of 1300% profit, now we're making 33% and the max drawdown is even lower. The sharp ratio instead of 1.5 is now 2 and the Calmo ratio instead of 2.2 is now 3.8. The annual return instead of 74% is now 107% and the win rate is 72% instead of 62 and the average holding hours for both of them are around 9 hours which makes it a day trading strategy. You can access the source code for both strategies on our website. If you haven't checked out this page yet, now's the time to do so. There are tons of other strategies in here and you can very quickly see the results of each strategy on various periods and symbols and timeframes. As always, we're going to have a giveaway. A random person who likes this video, posts a comment and subscribes to this channel is going to receive 1 million bank token. All right, let's pick the winner for the previous video. And the winner is really nice features for backtest. Thank you so much for your comment. Please reach out to me so that I can send you your bank tokens. Thank you for watching and happy trading.